Welcome back to part two of setting up our scroll view to put our buttons into for each quest event. Now we're going to go to the quest manager and it will be the one that creates the buttons and puts them in that scroll list. Actually, the buttons put themselves in the scroll list from their own code. But in the manager is where we will create them. So at the top of the manager, you want to add two lines of code. First of all, you need to get hold of the button prefab and you also need to get hold of the box that you want to put those buttons into. So just underneath the quest, we will put these two things in the quest print box. That's what I've called it. And also the button prefab. Okay. At this point, just save it. We'll switch back into unity, find our quest manager. Then when those two things come up as exposed, there they are, the quest print box, you want to put the context in there. Okay. Not the whole scroll view, the context. So grab that context and just drop that in there. Then the button prefab is going to be this button that we put down here in our asset. So I'm going to drag and drop that over into the button prefab. Right, that's ready to go. So let's go back into our code. And now we can start creating our buttons. There's a bit of code involved in this and you have to repeat it over and over for each button. So let's put that in a method. So underneath the start that's already there, I'm just going to put this in here for you. It's called create button. It takes a quest event in so that it can link the button to the event itself. It then does the instantiation of the button prefab. After that button exists, it can then tell the button to run its setup method that we programmed just before. And you need to pass through your event and also that box where it's going to live. Because remember the setup, if we go back to my button code here, go up to setup. Setup requires this scroll list so that it can set its button components parent to be that scroll list. So it's actually inside of that scroll list. If you're wondering what this false on the end is, and I didn't explain that before, did I? It will attach the button to that scroll list or put it inside that context box or content box, I should say, and it won't scale it to there. If you leave this false off, it will just default to um, true. And when you set the parent, what it does is something really odd and it, it scales the button down to like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in the X, Y, Z. Very odd. But if you put the false here, it will keep the original scale of the button. It won't try and do anything fancy with it um, as far as rescaling. Now, uh, where were we? Back in the manager. Once you've got your button and it's been set up, remember it will be set up automatically to be in a waiting status. However, if the quest that we're working with is the first quest in line to be achieved, using this if statement here, we can test for that, then we want to make that button actually current. And at the same time here, you can see that we will again update the button and we will set the events status to current as well. So we're kind of taking care of two things while we're creating the button. And that will make sure that the button, the first one in the list, will have that little blue cogwheel icon on it for us. And then we return the button so we can do something else with it a little later. Now, let's go back up here where we're creating everything and try putting in some button code. After we've done the BFS, the search through it, we'll put in here because it needs to have the orders all set up before you go ahead and create the button. Add this line of code, quest button button equals create button. So we run our create button. We send it our event A. So we're just doing this first one that we've created up here for now. That will return a button or a instance of our prefab, a link to it. We will then get hold of the quest button code that is attached to it and put it into this button so we can use it in a moment. So this is the minimum amount of code just to see if we've got this all working correctly. So just save that now, go back into Unity and we're all ready to press play. So we press play 
and it will run through setting up the graph, creating the button and adding it to our task list. And you should be looking at it there. Remember, this A event is the first one in the list, so it's going to have the little blue cogwheel next to it. And you can see our dummied values of test one and description one in there that I was using before. Right, so let's go back into the quest manager and try and create another button. So we'll just grab this code here because we'll just copy it and we'll put it there. And this time we're going to put B. And why don't we do it for all of them while we're in here? So we've got B, C, D, and E. And they probably would all benefit for having more meaningful names, but these are our quests that we created up here, or our quest events, and these are now all the buttons that are aligned to them. So with all those now getting created, save it, go back to Unity and press play, and we should see our scroll list populated. Okay, so there you go. You can see that the first one, the button is active. It's not doing anything at the moment. And all of the others are listed and they're in that waiting stage. They're also not interactable, so you can't do anything with it, which means this is the only event that is an option for Granny to try and achieve at this point in time. Now, we've got our quest list. We need to somehow link that to the environment so that Granny can do things and then our whole quest system will know about it. Usually when you take part in a quest and there's a task, it involves going somewhere or you know, at least being in some particular location. Now, what I want to do is build into this system a flexible way that you can keep the quest system just like it is and then basically just inject status changes back into it. So we're going to do that quite simply here by creating all of these locations that Granny can visit. And when she does end up at that location, for it to send a status update back into our little quest graph. So let's go into a 3D view and find where Granny is there. And we will create some more cubes. We've already got one cube. So let's just, where is that one? Oh, it's all the way out there. Okay, that will do. Um, so let's just duplicate that cube and put it just there and then duplicate it and put another one over there. I've got to have five locations for all of our tasks that we've got. So we want five cubes. I'm keeping them kind of close together on the map because we're going to have to test it and wander around and if they're all very far apart it makes it quite difficult to get to them. That other first cube I'll just move that over here with everything else so that they're now all together. So now we need some new code to tell these cubes that they happen to be a quest location. So let's go back in here to the quest folder create a new C-sharp script and we will call it a quest location. Then open up that script and we'll replace the contents of it as usual with this. All right, so let's go right up to the top. The items at the top are the same. The quest location again is a mono behavior. The variables are at the top, the properties that we're creating, there's a link to the quest manager itself, a link to the quest event that this location belongs to, and a link also to the quest button that has been set up and linked to the event. So all of these things are kind of staying set up and together. Now, what we're doing here to determine if an event has been achieved or not is if Granny just runs into the cube and hits it. So we're going to just have an on collision enter. As I said before, you can make this code as complicated as you want 
as long as when whatever condition you want satisfied has been achieved, that you inject these things back to the other systems to update all of the different statuses. So before we get here, let's start at the beginning. First of all, we're going to say if we have collided with the player, so if the cube has hit Granny, now Granny's tag should be player with a capital P. Let's just check that quickly, find Granny and have a look for tag. If it's not, make sure you do drop that down and set it to player because we don't want the cubes colliding with other things and mucking everything up. So when that happens, then we're going to say if the current status is not equal to current. So if we're at a location that isn't ready for you to perform that event, then we're not going to register anything. Okay, so you can run into that cube and it won't do anything. It's only if that's the current cube you should be visiting. And so if it is the case that you are where you're meant to be for this event, it's going to say, okay, this event's been done. It's just as easy as running into the block. So at this point, we need to inject the event itself, update quest event with an update status of done. The button, we want to update it to be done. And then we also want to tell the manager to update quests on completion, which we then pass through the event that we want to be updated. We haven't yet written this here, but it's going to not only update the status of our current events and button that we've got, but when a task has been achieved, the manager needs to go back through that graph and find, well, what's the next task that needs to be set as current and set it to current. And so this particular code itself, this location only knows about itself, its event and its button. It doesn't know about everything else in the graph. It's the manager that's looking after all of those things. This, again, is an attempt by me to sort of really try and separate these things out so that they're not totally intertwined, which was quite a challenge. All right, moving on, we're going to go into the setup, which will need to be set up when we create these locations. And that happens back in our quest manager. So this setup is going to receive a link to the quest manager, a link to the event, and a link to the button, because these are all the things that need to go together for this particular location. We then just assigning them to the properties that are inside of this class. And we are also setting up a link between the event itself and the button down here because of some code we're not yet writing. Um, this will need to happen and you'll see that in just a little bit. So there's two things in here that are going to cause you errors when you save this, but we will get back to them. So just hit save on that. Now we're going to go back into the manager and take care of this update quests on completion. So in the manager, let's add this new method down the bottom. And it looks like this. So we're passing through the event that we have just completed. And then we're going to loop through all of the quest events that we have stored in the event manager. If the order of the event that we've got by looping around all the ones that we know about is equal to the order of the event that's coming through plus one, it means it's the next event that needs to take place. So we then make that event current by running its update quest event and setting its status to current. So it will update that list and update all of the icons as well. So save that. Now the last thing we needed to check was that we've figured out that button link in the event code. So let's go back into the quest event and under the status here, we'll just add that quest button in. So that will get linked up back from that location when it gets created. And then we also, the reason we need that is when we update a quest event down in here, we're going to have button dot update button E. Yes, and this is so that as the manager is cycling through all of 
the events and updating them, it can then run this to update them. Because remember, the location itself doesn't do that. It just updates its own event, whereas that, you know, update everything on completion is run by the manager. Right, so we've now got all of our code, hopefully, together that's going to work for us. Let's go back into Unity, and we want to make sure that all of these locations that we've created, these ones here, have that location, uh, quest location added to them. So just drag and drop that code on to each one. Now we're ready to tell the quest manager about all of these event locations and hook everything together. So let's go back to our quest manager code. And what we're going to do is I'll give it the ability to pass in all of those event locations. And we'll do that right at the top. And being very uncreative at the moment, we're going to call them A, B, C, D, and E in capital letters so that they match the quest events that ha happen at those locations, just for ease of typing. You could have an array of game objects in here, and then you could have as many as you like, um, and then you could manage it slightly differently, as long as you're linking all of these bits and pieces together. So now that you've got those there, we can go down where we create the buttons, and after we've created each button in turn, we will link it to its location. So for A, it's going to look like this. A, get component, the quest location that's attached to it. Then we will run its setup, giving it the manager, the event, and the button, which is why we needed to return the button up here. You need to do this again for all of the others. So I'll quickly go through and do those. And there you have it. So they're all set up and they're all linked. Make sure that you've got your A with your A and your B location with your B event, etc. down through E. It's very easy to miss something when you copy and paste a lot of things. After you save that, go back into Unity, go to your quest manager, and you should get all of those exposed variables for each of our cubes. Just drag the cubes in turn into a position like that. So that's going to set up all the locations for us. At this point, unless you've put all of your cubes in the right order as to which events they're going to address, which I can't tell from here, and the more that you have, the more difficult it will actually be to know what you're meant to be doing. Because remember, our descriptions are really terrible for a start, uh, and it's not obvious which cube is what. So before we go ahead and test all of this, in the next lecture we'll come back and quickly add in the compass with this event system so that the compass will lead us to the next event location that we need to visit. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.